Hey guys, uh, Matthew, Actual Exotic Cars, haven't made a video in a while. Like I said, I am trying to get to a weekly video schedule, so hopefully this week. I'm um, hoping every Saturday I'll be able to release something. I have a ton of ideas, and I'm trying to free up a bunch of free time in order to do so. Also, relating to my blog, uh, same thing. I want to start doing a detailed post about once a week. We'll see if that happens or not. It takes me a while to make one, but that is the goal. So anyway, um, kind of, I guess, a change of topic here. I'm going to be doing a detailed re review of carfromjapan.com. My thought on importing vehicles, especially from Japan compared to, I guess, Europe, and my experience with importing a vehicle from Japan. Now, I haven't really found a good um, review on this website, and I stumbled upon it a few months ago, couldn't really find much, and ended up just buying a car from there anyway, <laughs> because YOLO, why not? And... Um, Thought I would share my experience because there's a few things that I wish I would have known before I've done so. And I guess sort of related to the when I bought my Buhanka in Russia. Hopefully some of these tips can help you out uh, if you plan on doing the same thing. Now obviously if you've seen anything on my channel before, you know, I kind of focus more. Obviously I have a Buhanka and Uaz. I also own a Yugo. I'll be making some more material. On, I'll be Actually I don't even have anything on that. I will be making material on that as well. I kind of like to focus more on, I guess, the Eastern European Soviet um, car market, Eastern Bloc cars. That's what my interest tends to run to. Now, why did I choose Japan to import a vehicle? First thing, real quick, I guess if I go to Google Maps here, um, importing a vehicle from Japan compared to Europe is way easier. And there are, cheese probably hundreds of companies in the U.S. where that's all they do is they import vehicles from. Look at all these. All these companies here import vehicles from Japan, and that's not even all of them. There's hundreds of companies, as far as I know, in the U.S. where all they do is they import vehicles from Japan, JDM vehicles for you. Now, I wish the same thing was true for Europe. There are companies that import vehicles from Europe, but not to the extent where you can literally, it's like Amazon, or you can just put in any maker model if I want a Honda Accord. Let me go here. And then check it out. This let's say this is the one I want. Wow, this is how much it is. And I can literally select what port I want to deliver it to. So I used to live near Jacksonville. Let's say I select Jacksonville US. It'll update the price, including the shipping to the port, which is absolutely ridiculous. I there's nothing this simple as far as I'm aware for the European car market or the Eastern Bloc car market, which hopefully that'll change sometime soon. But anyway, that's a big advantage of importing vehicles from Japan. Second thing, it's so common to import vehicles from Japan that the framework from shipping vehicles from Japan to the U.S. is very easy. And I'll get to registering it um, when I was at the my Secretary of State, your DMV. Uh, I thought it was going to be this big ordeal, like when I imported my van from Russia, it was this big ordeal. I had all the paperwork, but I still felt like um, it was a decent amount of time by the time I actually got it registered, and everybody's looking at me like, what are you doing? Like, we've never done this before. With Japan, it was not this way at all. I came in with all my Japanese paperwork, and I asked the lady, I'm like, man, this is fast. Within like five, ten minutes, I had my plate and everything. She's like, oh yeah, we just had a vehicle from Japan a couple weeks ago. We get like four or five of them a year. And I live in a small town in the middle of nowhere in the Midwest. So <laughs> I can imagine if you live in a city, it's even more common. So importing vehicles from Japan to the U.S. is very common. I guess the purpose would be as somebody that likes odd cars, how can somebody who's interested in Eastern Bloc cars, ex-communist cars, so on and so forth, take advantage of the situation? And like I said, it's a lot easier than Europe. Um, in Europe, as far as I know, pretty much, you have to know somebody. Um, I actually went over there when I bought my vehicle. I did not go over to Japan this time. I don't speak any Japanese, not a word, or no even Kanishiwa. Um, and if you look at the list here, this website, and again, there's a few other similar ones. This is just the one that I used because, in my opinion, it was one of the most user-friendly. Uh, Lada, for example. Okay, that's a Russian vehicle. Let's see what they got. All right, Lada, this is a 2019, so if you watch my video on how to import the Buhanka, you'll know that as an American, I cannot import this vehicle into the U.S. because it is too new. Um, I'm sure there's some other odd cars here, Datsu, 
Uh, a lot of these brands are not sold in the U.S. The vehicle, which I'm going to keep it a secret for now because I want to make a video on it, but the vehicle that I bought is not sold in the U.S. That's the reason why I bought it, and I necessarily didn't even want to buy it from Japan. It's not a Japanese car. It's just this was the easiest way to do it, as far as I know. Um, let's say you're really into French cars. We don't ha really have any of those in the U.S. They never caught on, unfortunately. Peugeot. Uh, year model, blah, 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 year max, okay, so let's say like 97, has to be older than 25 years, to import into the U.S., and that did not work, obviously, um, no, no, I don't really care, let's go 75 to 97, alright, well, <laughs> I guess that didn't work out like I wanted it to. But you get the idea. If you can find a vehicle that's older than 25 years, depending on which state you live in, uh, you can import a vehicle pretty easily. Now, I will say, and the one review I read on this website on Reddit, they ran into the same thing as me, because these are auction cars from Japan. They tried buying a vehicle from Japan, and what happened was, oh, this vehicle's unavailable, please buy this other one, but it's going to cost you a couple extra grand. And I ran into the same thing. I don't know if it's a scam or not, if it's just a coincidence. But basically what happened was I found the car that I wanted to buy, I pressed buy, I pressed the port that I wanted, I go through Baltimore just because it's the close, that in New York, about the closest to me, and I got the same thing, you're going to need a deposit, like an extra $2,000 because this vehicle, we have to give you this other vehicle instead, it's more expensive, I, it's the way it is, so just a little heads up, that might happen, and again, I think they said they would give me a refund if I wanted to, but I really wanted this vehicle, I was willing to pay an extra couple grand to get another one if the one that I wanted wasn't available. And as far as paperwork-wise, so I basically, and I would strongly recommend that you get WhatsApp if you don't have it already. When you deal with this company, somebody is going to reach out to you. You have to do a, again, WISE, the same thing that I use when I imported my Russian van. It's just an app I use. You have to transfer the money into a car from Japan, the actual company's bank account in Japan. Uh, the representative from their company reached out to me out through WhatsApp messaging me the entire process i would show some of those emails but i guess they have the name of my card slabbered all over it and like i said i kind of want to keep it on the down low for now because i have a video planned for that the i'm revealing i guess but yeah so back and forth shipping this is when it's going to release and it took a couple months by the time between i actually bought the vehicle and it was actually shipped it was like a month or something they had to wait for shipping schedules and sometimes they would get back with me right away, other times they wouldn't, so I was kind of disturbed with that. It's like, hey, you know, I just, I spent a lot of money. If I have any, like, weird questions, I had questions about, hey, like, getting a ship from the port, what type of paperwork do I need, and I just kind of got left unread, and other questions, they immediately got back with me. So I guess what I can advise as an American, number one, like anything, make sure that you can legally register it. And as a Michigan resident, as long as it's older than 25 years old, and it's unmodified, you are good to go. There's the two forms, the HS7 and the 7501 form that are required. And I went through Fast Customs Clearance. This is the company that I went through when I imported my van from Russia, and they did a good job, so I decided to use them again. I think the pricing's somewhat reasonable. It's only a couple hundred dollars. You can try to do Customs Clearance by yourself. I will say... I would not recommend doing so, especially with a more expensive vehicle, just because the fines are off the charts. Like, if you miss it by a day or something, or you screw up a form, you're talking about thousands of dollars of fines. To me, just the peace of mind, I can pay a couple hundred dollars, let somebody else who's a professional deal with it. I don't want to deal with all that. Again, if you have your own experience doing this by yourself without a company, let me know. <laughs> you know, leave it in the comments or message me or something. I would, I would love to know that or how that went, but it's just not something I want to mess with. And I also will say, compared to last time, this time, this individual, or I guess the company, did my HS7 and 7501. They filled them out for me, which isn't a huge deal, but it saves me like an hour of looking at the paperwork and having to do all that. And I will say, as soon, basically, as you get the information, and you will get the bill of lotting form, I got multiple emails from this company, um, Car from Japan, with saying, hey, like your car is shipped, your car is here, blah, 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 and the entire process. And as soon as your car gets shipped, I would recommend instantly trying to get it through, um, give it to your customs clearance guy with the bill of lotting form, 
and let them take care of it. Now, what happened with me is I wasn't sure if this company would take care of customs or not because it wasn't really, you kind of had to look into the details. I think there was something on like part of their website uh, about us, help support, general information. There's something here saying that you need to have a customs, but it was never specified when I bought the vehicle. So yes, you do need to have a customs or you need to put it through customs yourself. That's very important if you miss it. And I actually think I had to pay like a thousand dollars of late fees or something just because by the time I caught it, it was a little later, it was a couple weeks before it was supposed to arrive. And I think as soon as it arrived to the first port of the U.S. or something, you got to have it, the ball rolling. And I was a little late on that. So that's something you not you don't want to mess with. As far as I'm aware, if again, I'm if you've seen my first video on how I imported my Russian van, uh, there's two types of shipping. There's container and there's row row. And the way I like to describe it, row row is like a gigantic car ferry that goes across the ocean. And this went through row row shipping, which I haven't had any issues with. I know a lot of people have, but I will continue doing so, I guess, until I have issues just because the container situation is a lot more expensive. And if you heard all the horror stories about everything going on with ports and containers, it's a mess, especially going through the West Coast. I don't know how it is with Japan. And it was kind of cool because I had the, the bill of lotting. You can see the ship name and all that and i could track the ship going through the panama canal and all that which was kind of neat and yeah so as far as shipping that's pretty much how it went again that's just the company that i use um fast customs clearance and they've been good to me uh as far as actually shipping the vehicle i sent out a few quotes and i'm assuming most of the people watching this some people might live near the coast which is fine you can just go to the port but for a lot of us if especially like me, I live in the middle of the Midwest, you know, I'm not going to take a couple of days off from work or have to drive across the country with the trailer and do a big two, three day trip. I'd rather pay a trucking company a thousand dollars to deliver the car to me than have to do that. And that's exactly what I did. I did not use the same company that I used last time. Was that like TCI logistics or something like that? They, the quote was extravagant, <laughs> a lot more than I wanted to pay. And I kind of called around and I did end up getting a shipping estimate. The big problem, we well, got to make sure, uh, that you're aware of with all this is the company needs to be aware and again when you put out quotes like Baltimore to where I live in Michigan um, make sure you call the company and let them know the driver needs to have a TWIC card this is from a port they need to have a TWIC card they need to be TWIC certified and that's exactly what I did it added a little bit to the price I will also say when the driver did get there and um, got about three or four quotes like I said just google shipping companies put in your information and once you get the quote, end up calling the company and just let them explain the situation to them. Uh, the driver did not have a TWIC card. They actually had to wait an additional day. And uh, you can get an escort if you don't have a TWIC card into the port. And it costs a couple extra hundred dollars, which I was kind of mad because I informed the company that I needed a TWIC card. And the driver still didn't have one. But it just cost me an extra couple hundred dollars. I think all in all, I still ended up paying about $1,000 for shipping in total from the port to my residence, which is in the middle of the country, which is fine by me. Um, so as far as shipping goes, it's pretty much it. Uh, all the forms, I already went through that, pretty simple. Like I said, this time, customs guy took care of these two forms. Now when you use car from Japan, and I kind of had some issues because it got forwarded to the wrong address, so they use, they'll send you a message confirming, hey, we have this packet of stuff, you need to register your car, and we're going to send it to this address and I messaged back like, Hey, no, can you not send it to the address, this address? Can you send it to this address instead? And they still didn't. So if I could have went back in time, I would have tried to double confirm. But anyway, at the end of the day, I did end up getting my forms and I did end up getting them on time. So you get this big packet of information with all the paperwork that you need. There is one document I would request though. And I remember the first time that I registered my Russian van, they were very adamant. I needed to have signatures. They needed signatures to register the vehicle legally. And I messaged them saying, hey, is there any way I could get like an assigned invoice that with your signature, my signature, and the price? And I ended up doing that. I wish I would have done it earlier. So when they give you the price and you get, I guess, something similar to that in your packet, but it includes the shipping and the price. So when I paid my taxes, when you send it through customs, you pay your federal taxes. I paid federal taxes about two, three thousand dollars more than I should have. Um, I don't know how much that amounted to in the tax amount, like three, four hundred dollars or whatever, because um, I actually paid for the shipping as the cost of the vehicle. When they send you a separate invoice, which I would request, with just the vehicle, the price of the vehicle, they stamp it, and then there's a spot for you to sign your name. 
uh, it, they will take off the shipping cost and it's just the cost of the vehicle. That's what you should be paying taxes for. You shouldn't be paying taxes for uh, the shipping as well. So that's why I ended up have it happening. I ended up paying an extra three, four hundred, whatever it may be. Uh, by the time I registered at the state level, though, I did have that paper because I was paranoid about having it for registration because I kind of ran into, almost ran into issues the first time around. Thankfully, I did have that, and it has their stamp on it. And there was a spot on the bottom there where I could put down my signature. Like I said, it was just a little, you know, bill of sale, if you will. Just ask for a bill of sale with the vehicle price on it. And I only paid state taxes because when you go to register at the state, you got to pay your state taxes. And uh, I only paid state taxes for the cost of the vehicle, not for the shipping as well. So I strongly recommend you do that. That's something that's not outlined on the website. I wish they would include it in the packet. But... It made things a lot simpler, and like I said, I got from the moment I walked in to the moment I got my license plate, it was like five minutes. It was super fast, because this is apparently a very common thing to do. They were used to the paperwork, and it wasn't that big of a deal. So I do recommend you do that, um, something not outlined. I'm trying to think what else in this packet. You got your two forms. You get your customs clearance form. I did get an email from the port with the stamped release of my item, which was nice. I printed that out, gave it to them, and that should be all the paperwork other than insurance. Again, you can just call up your local insurance company, uh, tell them what the vehicle is, and even if it's something special, like with my UAS, for example, I was able to send them some pictures, tell them the price of it. They're more worried about the price of it than anything, and get some insurance on that. So that's pretty much as far as that goes trying to think what else in this paperwork here. Export certificate. These are my forms. Bill of lotting form you need. Yeah, they took my bill of sale form. Um, here is my invoice. And you will see the number here, which I ended up paying, actually includes the shipping as well. So when I sent the invoice of my bill of lotting to my customs guy, I ended up paying taxes for shipping that I shouldn't have because I thought it was a part of the vehicle sale, which is unfortunate. So just a heads up, if I could do one thing different, um, that and making sure I confirm that they sent that packet to the right address because it ended up getting shipped to my parents on the other side of the country and then they had to forward it up to me up here. So that kind of wasted a couple weeks and I was very paranoid. I was not going to be able to get my vehicle registered when I wanted to because of that. So anyway, that's pretty much my review with Car from Japan. Um, if I had to say like yay or nay, they are legit. Uh, it's not a scam. It's kind of worrisome when you're spending a heavy amount of money, especially on a website like this, and it seems like there's no information really out there other than a couple of vague reviews here and there. So yes, basically to wrap it all up, you need to have a customs guy, which is easy. It's Even if you don't want to go through this, there's other companies out there. Just find somebody that will do your customs for you. It only costs a couple hundred dollars. No biggie. As soon as you hear that the vehicle is leaving the port, I would make sure you get a hold of the customs guy so you don't have to pay fines like I did. And I'm trying to think of what else. Paperwork-wise, they send you everything. Like I said, I would make sure that you request that you get a bill of sale with a stamp, their stamp on it and a spot for you to sign just makes it easier for your DMV because if you buy a vehicle in the U.S., that's what's required. you got to have signatures, and it makes everything squeaky clean for them. Um, I'm trying to think. This time, I didn't have to have anybody actually examine my vehicle when I imported it from Russia. I did have to have a officer examine the vehicle and fill out a form. I don't know why this time. I think because my make is sold in the U.S., maybe, uh, where obviously UAS has never been sold in the U.S. That might be the reason. But keep that in mind, depending on what state you live in, I am very adamant that, again, this is the Michigan Secretary of State website of everything you need. If you live in Washington or Nevada or so on and so forth, make sure you check with your state. And especially some states like California are extremely strict to the point you might, might only be able to get vehicles from the 60s downwards, which really restricts what you're able to import. Um, as far as the vehicle itself, I did get an email basically saying... These are the problems with it. I paid an extra couple hundred dollars. That's an option to have an inspection of it, which I think is completely worthwhile if you're going through all this trouble and hassle of importing a vehicle from abroad. Make sure you know what you're getting. It doesn't hurt to get a little inspection. Make sure there's no coolant in the oil or anything like that. Or if, like a couple of my seats have some small tears in them, that was included in the inspection report. I'm fine with that, but it's nice to know ahead of time. Um, 
everything's pretty good with my vehicle. I haven't really had too many issues other than self-inflicted ones, if you will. Uh, I needed to change out, like, the windshield wiper, you know, just weird small stuff like that. But as far as fluids and everything go, everything's good to go. So don't really have any complaints on that front. Like I said, I was kind of worried with the um, lack of response on certain things. Again, they give you an actual individual to talk to through the WhatsApp. You go back and forth through text. Um, but I'm spending this much money. If I have a question about customs or something, even if you don't have an answer to it, like at least text me back, hey, you know, this is a local issue. We don't deal with this. Or give me some sort of recommendation or something. And I just got nothing, which was worrisome i had a decent amount of money invested in this so those would be my complaints um definitely a pretty cool website like i said i wish they would have something uh, this user friendly uh state for european eastern european vehicles hopefully one day me or something will get created where that does happen but there's a wide array man i'm just trying to think of all the cool stuff you can get on the and by the record, uh, by the way, I did get a European vehicle from here, and it is left-hand drive, so it's not all JDM uh, type vehicles as you would think. Go here, see if there's any Volvos. Yeah. So yeah, I would recommend um, if I had to give a rating, geez, I don't know, um, maybe seven out of ten, eight out of ten, or something like that, uh, just for the reasons that I laid out. And that's pretty much the end of the video. So I plan on making an accompanying article with this, maybe in slightly more detail on my blog, uwazamerica.com. Now, I haven't seen any uwazes on here, unfortunately. I don't know if I go... I showed the one lot of... Uh, let's see. No, no uwaz. Keyword. She's... Almost any Volgas, Gazas. I was still searching for Pujo. But anyway, there are a couple of Eastern Bloc vehicles on here. Um, that's something where you might want to look out for. And that might this might be a good alternative for you compared to actually importing one, especially with everything going on right now in Eastern Europe. Uh, obviously, importing a vehicle from there is not as easy as it used to. Never that it was easy, but with the situation going on, it's definitely not ideal. And this might be an easier way of doing so. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up real quick. Thanks for watching. Like I said, I will hopefully every Saturday you'll start to see a video release from me um, related on <laughs> vehicles that don't necessarily belong in the U.S. And uh, I will see you soon. Thanks.